This is module number 22 on Chola sculpture as part of course on Indian art and aesthetics. In this module, Chola dynasty is introduced with its interactions with rivals like Pallavas, Pandyas and smaller chiefs. After tracing significant rulers of this dynasty, monuments and sculptures ascribed to their reign have been studied. During this period in South India, it is seen that monuments which began during Chola period saw much ad additions eventually. This is due to the fact that many of these temples remained and still continue to remain living religious sites. And thus, every new ruler made some intervention in the monuments to assert his power. Therefore, it becomes impossible to ascribe any monument to just a single age or to give it a single name. Also, a study of sculpture reveals how traditions were carried on further by newer kingdoms, though leaving their own special traces. For example, a close study of sculptures at Meenakshi Temple reveals differences in Pandyan and Nayaka sculpture. Few Chola monuments have been studied in this module and various stylistic affiliations have been discussed. Chola Dynasty Cholas find mention in Sangam literature. Vijayalaya Chola, 9th century common era, the king of Thanjavur founded the imperial Chola empire. Bala Subramanyam writes, The rise and expansion of the Chola power began in the 9th century AD under Vijayalaya, who is designated only as Parakesi Varman in almost all his inscriptions. Urayur, the ancient capital of the Cholas of Sangam age or Palayaru, near Kumbakonam might have been his starting point. His first conquest was the capture of Tanjai or Tanjavur and Vallam in the Tanjavur district. There is mention of one Ko Illangu, Mutharya, the only Mutharya chief who claims a regnal year of his own and whose inscriptions are found at Niyamam, Tirukkodikkaval and Koiladi. It seems highly probable that he was the last of the line of the local ruling chiefs at, of the Muttariyars and the one whom Vijayalaya overthrew. This was the beginning of the great career of conquest and expansion of the Chola power. Aditya Chola I, the next ruler, is credited with Nageshwar Swami temple, Kumbakonam. Chola architecture as seen today began during his time. He also made Vijayalaya Choleshwaram at Narthamalai, dedicated to his father. Parantaka I seems to have captured Madurai, the Pandyan capital, and is also called Madurai Konda Parantaka Chola. He even invaded Sri Lanka. After him, a series of rulers followed, and the most important to emerge is Rajaraja Chola I. He was one of the most powerful kings of this dynasty. He is known to have invaded Sri Lanka, Thailand, Maldives, Mali and Malaysia. This clarifies the wrong notion that no Indian king ever invaded a foreign land. He is credited for making Brihadeshwara temple. Rajendra Chola I, also known as Gangai Konda Chola, made the new capital called Gangai Konda Cholapuram after his father's death. This place also has a Brihadeshwara temple, another temple with the same name. He also travelled north and collected water in a pot from all the rivers he crossed. This water he poured in the water tank called Jalavijaya Stambha in front of the temple. Thus it becomes a victorious water pillar. He too is credited to have travelled to foreign land and made the kings there surrender to him. After several rulers, Rajaraja Chola III, early 13th centuries, seems to have made Dharasuram. Vijayanagara rulers come here after this period and take Chola artistic influence to Karnataka, that is Hampi. Then Nayaka rulers, they were mostly Telugu but ruled over many parts of South India, were governors of Vijayanagara rulers. They are known from several places like Madurai, Tanjavur, Gingi, Kumbakonam among others. Kumbakonam has many Nayaka temples. Meenakshi temple at Madurai can be attributed to Nayakas too. Irukkavelas and Mutharyas held their place in Pudukottai and Kodumbalur. Pandyas were powerful in the region further down south. 
Pallavas are powerful in the north of River Kaveri and had been attacked by an alliance of Pandyas and Cheras before. Cholas begin rising at this time and eventually come to dominate smaller dynasties. Pandyas and Cholas eventually come together to attack Pallavas. Mover Koil of Kodumbalur. Kodumbalur was also known as Kodumbai and Irukkavelur. It was situated on a strategic position between the Chola and Pandya kingdom. Balasubramanyam says, The Irukkavelas of Kodumbalur, like the Mutharyas of Niyamam, Mimam, distinguished themselves as generals and statesmen and played no inconsiderable part in the constant struggle for supremacy among the southern pass, Pallavas, Pandyas and Chola. Kodumbalur had been the scene of many a battle where fates of many rulers and dynasties were decided. Muvarkoil and Muchukundeshwara are the only two temples that survive in this city. Muvarkoil has three shrines. Balam Subramanyam further says, there is a Kannada inscription engraved on the three stones built into the bound of the holy tank in front of the Muchukundeshwaram temple. And in this inscription, there is a reference to a temple by name Vikram Kesarishwaram. It is surely a reference to the mover coil, at least to the central shrine, which perhaps was named after the founder Bhuti Vikram Keswari. On the south wall of the central shrine, there is a Sanskrit inscription in Grantha script relating to the building of this temple. It, con it contains a genealogy covering nine generations of Irukkavel chiefs ruling over this area together with a record of their achievements. It further says that Vikram Kesari, the Kalpataru, the wish-giving tree to the learned and the beloved of the goddess of the earth, victory, prosperity, fame and speech, raised three Vimanas in his name and in the name of his two queens that is Karali and Varaguna, and enshrined Maheshwar in them. This Yadava chief also gave Malikarjun, the ascetic chief of the Kalamukha sect, born of the Atreya Gotra, resident of Madurai, the master of the Veda and the pupil of Vindhyashri, a big matha and a gift of 11 villages for the maintenance of 50 ascetics and for various offerings to the deities of this temple. According to one theory, this structure could be of pre-Chola period and may be ascribed to Erukkavels. Brahmapurishwar Temple at Pullamangai This temple lies in Tanjavur district and has been ascribed to the period of Parantaka 1 by Balasubramanyam. This has the depictions of Durga, Lingodhava Shiva, Brahma and Dakshinamurti and Ganesh.
Nageshwar Swami Temple, Kumbhakonam. Kumbhakonam city is full of temples. It is attributed to Aditya Chola I. This temple also seems to have received patronage from a Chola queen called Sembian Mahadevi. She was the mother of Utta, Uttama Chola. A bronze sculpture depicting her as Parvati is presently with Freer Gallery of Art, Washington, D.C. It can be said that the best of Chola sculpture is in this temple. There are Nayaka editions in this temple as well, which consists of depictions of horses. The lower portion is originally from Chola period, whereas the upper portion has undergone much renovation. Dakshina Murti, small Ramayana panels, a Surya image is seen here. Few other sculptures cannot be conclusively identified. These images with drooping shoulders, belly curves, maybe Ram and Sita going for Vanvas, they are therefore shown in ascetic form. These images can truly be called Chola classical sculpture. However, it may be noted that the images are very uncomfortably placed in the niches and are almost cramped in less space. On the other hand, the figures, in some cases, appear to be almost free of the background and seem to be standing independent of it, though in cramped up space. Huntington feels that an entire phase of architecture and sculpture can be named after Sembian Mahadevi. She says, The next phase of architecture and sculpture following the reigns of Aditya Van and Parantaka Van has been called the Sembian Mahadevi phase. Named after the queen of Dandara Aditya 949-57 who died early. His surviving queen became a great patron of arts through her religious devotion. It is thought that her influence on art was felt for about a period of 60 years, during which time she founded and patronized numerous establishments. Inscriptions clearly testify to her activities from the time of Parantakavan through the reigns of her son Uttamavan, 969-85 Common Era, and the first part of the reign of the great Rajarajavan, 985-1014 Common Era. During the Sembian Mahadevi phase, numerous older brick temples were rebuilt and almost overnight replaced by those in stone. Vijayalaya Cholishwaram, Narthamalai. The structural temple here was made by Aditya Chola I for his father Vijayalaya. The rock caves here may be attributed to Muthariyar rulers, but this remains debatable. There is a Shaivite cave, a Vaishnavite cave, and a structural temple. The Shaivite cave, which is smaller, has an inscription. The larger cave has images of Vishnu and Saptamatrika panel. The Saptamatrika panel was probably made later, maybe in Chola period. A Pandyan inscription in 13th century Common Era actually mentions this place as Vijayalaya Choleshwara. The inscription also mentions that the structure was struck by lightning and was damaged. Renovations were then carried out. One theory is that this could be a Palipade structure. 
These structures have been discussed before in a previous module. There is also a high possibility that Vijayalaya may have been killed at this very place. South of this region belonged to Pandya kings and Vijayalaya may have been at war with them. So this site may not just be the place where he was cremated, it may be the very place where he died. However, there is no inscription at the structure to support this theory. Bala Subramanyam, in his work, Early Chola Art Part 1, discusses Chola funerary temples. This is an exclusively Chola structure, not the cave, only structural monument, and has no Nayaka period additions. Brihadishwara Temple. This temple was built by Raja Raja Tor Chola I and was completed around 1010 Common Era. However, it has a long history and additions were made by Vijayanagar, Maratha rulers and Nayaka rulers. Maratha Tanjavur tradition begins around 17th century Common Era. Tanjavur paintings have heavy elements from Maratha and Nayaka art. Much Chola painting is preserved on the walls of this temple. This temple has three stories. The first two are taken by the Shivaling itself. 108 karanas of Indian classical dance have been carved here. The temple also has Nayaka paintings. There are original Chola sculptures with Nayaka decorations. The top portion of this temple has image of Tripurantaka. Usually in Chola temples, Tripurantaka is placed on northwest. The main enemies of Cholas Kalyani Chalukyans were in that direction. It is said that the Chola Tripurantaka looks towards Kalyani Chalukyans. But here the upper portion is filled with Tripurantaka images. This means that he is looking all around. Raja Raja had sent his son Rajendra for campaigns and he defeated one of the Kalyani Chalukyan kings. According to an inscription, the defeated king drowned himself. Rajendra took one of the Dwarapalas, the assertive Utpatti Pitavu Dwarapala, from that region and brought it to Chola region. Thus, these kind of Dwarapalas are seen in Chola region for the first time here. An image seen often in many temples is that of Lalatitilak. According to the myth, Shiv is teaching dance to Parvati and eventually Parvati becomes highly accomplished. She is able to do anything that Shiv does. At this, Shiv decides to show his supremacy and performs a trick. He touches his forehead with his foot, lifting it from the behind. This has been depicted in various versions in sculpture. Sometimes, Shiv is seen holding Kundala with his foot. Brihadishwara Temple in Gangaikonda, Cholapuram. This is credited to the reign of Rajendravan and has some significant sculptures. A sculpture in this temple depicts Chandeshanu Graha Murti. In the image, Shiv is seen conferring grace or favour on a boy called Chandesha by tying a cloth on his head. Chandesha used to tend his cows and they gave much milk. He would use the remaining to worship Shivlingas which he made out of sand. His father kicked these off since in his opinion his son was wasting food. Without lifting his head, Chandesh cut off his father's feet. At this, Shiv was extremely pleased and granted grace on him. This image can also be seen as symbolizing Rajendra Vans' victories by the grace of Lord Shiv. Shiv is therefore seen conferring honour on Rajendra Van. The North Gopura of this temple seems to have been completed by Vijayanagar king Krishnadevaraya, since an inscription of this name is found there 
along with this portrait image. Ayrateshwara Temple of Darasura. This temple has many similarities with, with Hazaranam Rama temple at Hampi. Architects from this place may have gone to Hampi. This is the Chola style which is taken by Vijayanagar rulers, Devaraya II. He built Hazar Rama temple. Shabaramurti is seen in this temple. This deity is an incarnation of Shiv and the concept originated due to the cultic rivalry between Vaishnavites and Shaivites. Narasimha, the extremely powerful incarnation of Vishnu, after completing his task, could not control his energy. Therefore, Shiv took the form of Shabara and controls Narasimha. In the sculptural depictions, Shabara is seen holding Narasimha. To counter this overpowering by Shaivism, Vaishnavites came up with the concept of Gandabarunda Murti, which is a two-headed mythological bird with magical powers. This bird is, is said to control Shabara and is seen in Sri Rangam, which is a Vaishnavite center. Shivramurti calls Prihadeshwara and Darasuram sculptures early Chola art. He describes the sculptures in the following words. If there is a power and massiveness almost masculine about the Brihadeshwara temple and its sculptures erected by Raja Raja the Great, the massiveness is given a greater grace a soft elegance and a certain feminine touch which linger about the exquisite sculptures adorning the edifice itself at Gangai Konda Cholapuram, a permanent glory to the great conqueror and ruler Rajendra Chola. The Tandav Ganapati showing beautiful flexions with the natural elephant's head, chubby little limbs is a dainty piece of sculpture. The Nataraja, in one of the niches, though unfortunately broken, is an excellent specimen of the kind in stone. In the panel of Chande Shanugraha Murti, the future of early Chola art is easily given a foretaste, as some of the features so characteristic of late Chola sculpture appear here rather indistinctly for the first time. But the art on the whole of the 11th century is still full of vitality and grace of early Chola art. Kuranganatha Temple, Srinivasa Nallur.
ascribed to the period of Aditya I, this temple has some unidentified sculptures, which are considered to be among the best ones of this age by Subramanyam. He says, in the sublimity of expression, the delicacy of chiseling and elegant ornamentation, they have their counterpart in Nageshwara temple at Kumbhakonam, Ranganath Swami temple at Srirangam, Chola period and it extends to 20th century common era. This temple was initially made by the Cholas, but additions were made till 20th century common era. After the Chola structure, there was a Vijayanagara enclosure, followed by a Nayaka enclosure, then Mar Maratha enclosure, and finally 20th century enclosure. So walking into the temple is almost like walking back in time. It is a significant Vaishnavite living religious center of South India today. Pandyan dynasty. Thirumayam caves with depiction of Sheshashai Vishnu have already been discussed in the previous module. According to Shivram Murthy, these are early Pandyan caves and not Pallava or Mutharyar. Meenakshi temple at Madurai. The mandap dating to 13th century common era at Meenakshi temple leading to the shrine at Madurai is an example of late Pandyan work. At the first sight, the sculptures here look Nayaka, but a closer examination reveals differences in details. The colossal figures like those of the horse riders were conceived and executed by late Pandyans and this tradition was continued by Nayakas. The sculptures are huge in size and look hefty and overpowering and are of higher quality workmanship than Nayaka sculptures. 
Two rows of different deities are seen in a small corridor of the Pandyan period at Meenakshi Temple. Betuvan Koel at Kalugumalai. Vijay Venu Gopal writes about this site. Thus, the unfinished temple at Vettuvan Koel furnishes us with certain characteristic features. It contains some unusual sculptures like the Mridanga Dakshinamurti, the Visapa Harna Shiva, Vishnu in Maharaja Leela pose, Skand in partially Guru Murti form, Ushasahi Murti in casual posture, and the Peeping Princess and the bathing damsels together with an interesting Mithuna portrayal. It is the only type of temple in Tamil Nadu that is rock-hewn and chiseled from the top. Obviously, it is dedicated to Shiv, though no ling is found inside the cellar. Instead, an idol of Ganesh is found installed there now. Though this temple is situated in the Pandya country, it has striking similarities with Dharmaraja and Arjun Rath of Mammalapuram, suggesting the influence of the Pallava art. But why the temple is unfinished is still a mystery. It is true that quite a few cave temples were found in the Pandya country modelled on Pallava lines. These were due to the influence exerted by the Bhakti movement that was spreading through the Pandya country at that time. It is interesting to note that all these cave temples were cut more or less on the same hills where one finds the earlier Jain monuments and rock cut beds. These conversions of the hills into abodes of Hindu gods may be a reflection of their conversion from Jainism to Hinduism. There is another motive in the construction of temples one notices in South India. Temples were built as a mark of victory over a king or a region. The famous Virupaksha temple at Patadakal was built by the queens of Vikramaditya II as a mark of his victory over Kanchi, according to the inscription in Patadakal. The temple was built by the Acharis brought from the Pallava countries. We have to consider and collect proofs as to whether similar intention motivated the Pandya in constructing Vetuvan Koil. That is, if it symbolized their victory over the Pallavas of Kanchi. There are frequent wars between the Pandyas and the Pallavas. Besides, there were marriages too. But why the temple was left unfinished? Perhaps a subsequent war might have prevented the completion of the temple. Or it may be a monument cut as a victory memorial modelled on Kailashnath temple at Elora by the Rashtrakuta king Govind III who came to throne in 794 AD who conquered the Pallava king Dandivarman and went up to Rameshwaram in Pandya country, issuing a copper plate from there. These are all only speculations and strong evidences are yet to be traced. Close to this monolithic temple, there are carvings on a boulder which depict Tirthankara Parshavnath flanked by Padmavati and Yakshi. Another example of Pandyan sculpture which has survived vandalism is a panel of dancing Shiv with Parvati, Nandi and Ganas watching at a cave at Tiruparang Kunram near Madurai. Caves at Pillai Yaru Patti also have Pandyan art. <laughs>